Okay, so this video fixed that throttle body. This is one of those cheap Chinese 92 millimeter throttle body jobs. Um, it has whistled like crazy since I got it. Drives me freaking nuts. And I also changed up my intake too. So this is two truck air intake kits in order to make a cold air because I had it over here right by the headers before and uh, my IETs were through the roof. And I got my data logging figured out so I can dial this thing in. Maybe get better than 204 horsepower out of it because I'm going drag racing next weekend. Okay, in this video here, you can hear it whistling like crazy. Uh, well, I had the hood off, checking my engine mounts for flex. And this Carlisle video is just as bad, if not worse, uh, when I kind of just got it running. You hanging on? Okay, I'm porting out this IAC. I tried some, now I'm trying some more because it still whistled last time. But, uh, pull out the IAC, port it from the front side and from the back side here, and get as much clean airflow as you can. Hopefully, that whistle goes away. Okay, and now that I've done some serious butchery in there, maybe that whistle will be gone. I mean, it's going to flow a hell of a lot more than it did. Obviously still not as much as this factory one, which had massive openings in both directions. All right. Definitely some battle scars for me doing a shit porting job. But that should flow a lot more air than it used to. And be a lot less whistly. So porting it definitely helped. There's a little bit of a whistle left, but it's way better than it was. What really helped the most was getting rid of the throttle cracker completely in the tune. Just disabled it completely. And then there's throttle follower, and I dialed that back by like 75%. So there's only like 25% of what it used to be. That helped like hell too. So I'm thinking to combat IATs with this air filter right by the headers. Uh, what I may have to do is fabricate my own coolant tank that occupies this area right here basically and then run the air filter through this hole where the uh, charcoal canister was so I can have the air filter in the fender well itself with a pipe going over here to it and I think that would give me enough room because that is about the only way possible to make this happen. So I thought about fabbing my own coolant reservoir, but I went through, I looked at Dorman 603 part numbers, which are all coolant reservoirs, and found something that'll work. Well, this definitely could fit better. It's too deep to run it all the way over to the edge here like I really wanted. Um, hmm. After drawing some spot welds out, a little bit of sledgehammer work, this Saturn coolant reservoir Fits pretty good. I'm doing the mounts for it right now. All right, so I had a picture in my head of what this intake would end up looking like. <laughs> and this wasn't it. It's a little wonky. You can see the shape here is a little screwy. Uh, I was going to make a plate that uh, bolted in here and stuff, but this little clip from the truck thing, I think it works good enough. It's pretty... Pretty solid, not going anywhere. Um, <clears throat> what I tried to do was hammer this on the back side here for some more clearance of this pulley. See my little sharpie mark there? But uh, I kind of just flattened the other side when I tried to whack it. Uh, and I do have to see what I end up for with hood clearance because that looks pretty high, but it looked pretty high before too when it fit okay. Picked up one of these little filter boots. Make sure it ain't sucking up water. There we go. The chrome delete on the intake tube. That shiny aluminum wasn't jiving with me. So I had these on my last Beretta. And now they're going to go back here. I'll put a link to my old Beretta video where I ran a 13.2 out of it. I don't know if I'm going to get that out of this one. Uh, but that was a pretty badass car. 
Well, this is an improvement. I'm getting a PCM logger to work here with my stupid little OBD link. Okay, I got Tuner Pro working out too. But I see some weird glitchy stuff going on where the readings look mostly normal and then they go crazy for a frame. Not sure what the deal is there. So what I had to do to actually get this work is to snip that tan wire. Go into the OBD2 dongle, the UART data. I don't know what the hell it is, but once I snipped it, I can actually connect fine. Um, I'm gonna guess it's like a 13.8 at 97. 